Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, here's a little um, graph, graphical image of what's described as the folium of Descartes. And it has the following equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. In this case, A um, describes as the shift. So if A is equal to 1, it gives out this um, graphical um, this, this algebraic curve over here, of course, defined with the asymptote of x uh, plus y plus a is equal to 0. In this case, a is equal to 1. So this is how our asymptote is defined as follow. And we have the parameterization x is equal to 3t um, divided by 1 plus t cubed, and then y is equal to 3t squared is, uh, divided by 1 plus t cubed, such that t is in between 0 to infinity. And the question, and really in today's video, is that we want to calculate the area of the um, the region that is enclosed by this loop over here. So, a lot of things, um, not really a lot of things going on, but we're actually going to take the advantage of using Green's theorem, which it actually defines the relationship between a line, inter a line integral over some curve, a uh, smooth curve C, with the relationship of a double integral over some region um, D. And we'll call it, we'll call it D in this case. So we're going to use Green's theorem to help um, calculate this um, integral. Specifically, um, the double relationship with the double integral says that an area of just some region, and specifically we look at this from a Cartesian coordinate standpoint, is defined as the double integral of some of um, some region D. And then it, your integrand is just one um, times D A is the differential of um, the region you're. Um, integrating under. So we're going to take that and then um, use that to advantage with, especially with the parameterizations that we're given, and then convert this back into a um, line integral. So basically, we're actually going backwards in this case. We're going to start with the double integral and then go back to the line integral and then calculate that line integral in order to achieve the area that we want. Okay, so with that, let's start. So we actually use Green's theorem. So what, what does Green's theorem state? So uh, Green's theorem that says that if C is uh, positively, it's positively orient, is it positively oriented piecewise um, smooth curve? Well, it's also a, a piecewise uh, simple smooth um, closed curve on um, in a plane. I'll say that in a plane. D D is actually be a region that's bounded by C. Um, P and Q are actually functions in terms of X, Y that is defined on that open region that contains D. And both P and Q, they um, having continuous partial derivatives over there, at the, over at that region. Then we say the following, um, then we say the following formula. I, I know I didn't write this out, but everything I just explained will, um, Put in will make everything sense and clear. So we say that, um, well, in other words, how about this? I'll um, just to save some space. I'll just get rid of the writing here. And instead, since I just gave everything of uh, the prerequisite of what Green's theorem says, we it says that the, um, the line integral uh, positively oriented of the curve C of PDX plus uh, QDY is actually equal to the double integral of some of our region D, and then we have the uh, partial derivatives del um, Q divided del Q of del X subtract with del um, P divided by or del del P of del Y in respect then um, dx dy like so. Of course, I mentioned that the path of integration for along C is actually um, counterclockwise, and then I mentioned that um, the area of the region. So that's actually using the um, terms of double integral is that that's actually equal to, so the um, double integral even um, being integrated in the region D is our integrand one and then DA. I just note like some definitions, Green's theorem and what the area of the region is defined in terms of double integrals. So now let's actually get to um, the actual main part of answering the um, question of what the area of that enclosed loop is. So the thing is that we're starting backwards and we're going from a double integral and then converting this back into a line integral. So what this entails is that we need to, we notice that um, the following with the partial derivatives del Q of del um, X subtract del P of del Y in respect, it has to equal one. But um, 
and now now that there's many ways to come up with functions and then taking its um taking its um, partial derivative just to set this equal to each other using some technical um, just inspection you know without getting too crazy about it we see that we can find um, some function of p p of x uh, we can say that that's just equal to negative y and then q of x y is equal to x so we see that um, here's another formula that we can state is that if we have some um, we have some um, line integral of some vector field f and then that's in respect with the par parameterization of the vector function r with the dot product of um, dr that's basically just says that we actually can take that parameterization so we set this from a to b of f of um, of your vector function rt then actually take the dot product of our um, well, well actually in other words you just multiply this with your um, parameterization well the r prime of t dt so that's what we're actually going to do to um, put this back and go backwards. So we start from our double integral. Um, this is d1 dA. And then um, you see that if we could just plug this back to our pieces, then we say that this is actually just equal to, um, in this case, we have that variable. So that means um, del Q of del X subtract del P of del Y is just equal to two coming from these functions over here. Okay, so now we can plug everything back. So what this means is that if we were to plug this back for two, but it's set that equal to one, so we just have to divide two to both sides. So that means we just had this as one half, then multiply with our um, line integral of um, C. Well, in this case, we can say that because the parameterization goes from zero to infinity. So I'll just write that as our new bounds. Zero to infinity of, uh, well, actually that's not yet. We haven't gotten to that step yet. We're just actually putting back our um, functions in terms of X, Y that has the continuous partial derivatives, C, of, um, what was it? So it's commutative. So what I can do is I'll actually just put X then DY, then subtract Y and then DX. Okay, so then from here, now we can actually plug in the substitution. We take our X with the parameterization. We set that X is equal, given that X is equal to 3T, one plus T cubed. Then take that differential of dy, which we have that um, different, which we have the parameterization in terms of y is given with this function. Do the same thing over here, just plug in the substitution. It's pretty just straightforward. And since we're converting this into a parameterization in terms of t, that means our new interval will have to be from zero to infinity as well. So we have one half then times the um, integral from zero to infinity. Let's see, we plug x, so this is 3t, 1 plus t cubed, then multiply with the differential of um, dy. So if you actually take the derivative of this in respect to um, t, for to plug into dy, of course, with that substitution, you're gonna get that um, the um, derivative from here in respect to t, this is just 6t, um, then subtract 3t to the fourth power, then this is just divided by one plus t cubed then square. Okay, and then subtract with uh, whatever the y, y um, parametric equation. So this is three t square divided by one plus t cubed. Then multiply with the derivative in respect to x over here. So this will be um, three minus six t. Okay, and then just divide that by, um, well actually this is supposed to be a cube. Uh, is it cube? Yeah, okay. This is supposed to be cube. And then divide this by uh, one plus t cubed, then square, then dt. Skipping the steps to actually show the work of, you know, doing some simple algebra and then simplifying terms out. Uh, once you do all that, you're gonna get that this is just uh, one half, then times the integral zero to infinity. Um, so if you put everything together, you're gonna get 9t squared plus 18t to the fifth plus 18t squared minus nine to the t fifth, all divided by one plus t cubed, quantity cube. Um, then simplifying stuff out, you get 9t squared plus 9t to the fifth, then divided by uh, one plus t cubed, then to the power cubed dt. Then I can factor out a 9t squared, then factor out the nine. So I have nine divided by two. Then the C integral from zero to infinity. I can factor out so that um, this is, what we say, 9t, I factor out 9t squared, so that's just one, then plus uh, t cubed, then the quantity one plus t cubed cancel from both the top and denominator, then that degree just uh, subtracts two. So this is t squared, then 
one plus t cubed then square and then dt. So now this is just very straightforward, just perform a u substitution. So we let u equals uh, one plus t cubed, then du is equal to, uh, what is it, 3t squared dt. Um, let's see, so 3t, uh, just divide the three to both sides, so nine divided by six, that's just three over two. Uh, then we com compute our new bounds, we plug t for zero, so that means this will just be one, then infinity, so infinity over here. Um, and then this is just one divided by u square uh, du. Doing so, three over two, then calculate the definite integral. This is just negative one over u from infinity to one. And then if you just compute the bounds, therefore infinity, this is just zero, then minus, uh, minus one, so positive one. So therefore the area of the loop in, or the area of the region enclosed by this loop is actually just equal to three over two, like so. And there we have it. Going backwards from um, using Green's theorem, starting with the double integral and going back to the line integral, converting this back with the substitution and the parameterization over here leads us to a definite integral in terms of t with that parameterization, doing the u sub, and this is what we get. So yeah, uh, that's a pretty cool if you ask me.